Hello everybody. We're going to go ahead and talk about the fuel system upgrades required to uh, do a little bit of a boosted project on a, uh, on a street truck. So this is what we ended up purchasing. We found ourselves a sweet uh, Inunu body style or Trailblazer SS intake manifold from the local wrecking yard. Um, and we decided to go ahead and use a ICT billet 3 to 4 adapter. And the reason for that is because uh, I really don't think it matters to have a 90 millimeter throttle body versus a 78. It just adds more complication and uh, it's much easier. This is a this is all going on a 2006 truck. So it's Gen 3 throttle by wire, uh, kind of a weird setup. So anyway, we decided to go with a set of DECA 80 EV1 injectors. Uh, these were purchased through uh, Varin at VS Racing. Uh, it gives us a small discount on the uh, sloppy verse, uh, as well as tune the trilogy, which uh, I'm thankfully part of. Uh, Joe Simpson's a fantastic uh, teacher, and I've learned a ton from him. Uh, we went ahead and used uh, a spacers that I made on a lathe. Uh, they're roughly, I don't know, 530 thousandths or so. Uh, it seems to work pretty good. Um, the fuel rails, however, are something a bit unique. So what they are, they are a factory new new body style fuel injector rail except I took them apart I had two pair I had a pair of them I guess I took them apart and I created a return style system um, for these rails so what I did was I just took the other side so both feed sides uh, they actually bolt right up perfectly and I'll just use a 180 degree PTFE fitting which will feed back to the fuel pressure regulator and the fuel pressure regulator we're going to use is a AEM, um, I don't know, 6AN ORB style, you know, boost reference or, or at least manifold reference pressure. Um, and the reason for that is A, it's a little bit bougie, I get it, uh, but B, it's a little bit better to adjust it and it uh, just makes things a little easier to deal with instead of using like a Corvette style regulator and all that. Um, the other thing I decided to go with as well is a flex fuel sensor. Yes, this is a little expensive, I will admit. Um, is it necessary? I don't think so. But what it does do is it offers a nice little mounting tab, and it does have some bypass capabilities to it, which is great. Um, this is just a standard GM AC Delco uh, flex fuel sensor with a part number of uh, 13507128. It's like the 95 millimeter overall length. Works just fine. Bolted right together. This is from 40T Performance out of uh, California. Um, it's the same as you know some of the other brands that are out there, but regardless, I liked it, so I got it. Uh, I went ahead and found a plug that I can put the pins on for the flex fuel sensor from Boost Monkey. I believe I got it on Amazon. Uh, this bag here is a bag of EV1 connectors. I'm not a giant fan of adapter harnesses. I know people have had great luck with them and others have had a lot of struggle. I figure if anything down the road we decide to change the injectors on this vehicle, it'll just be easier to have EV1 style plugs and then we don't have to worry about adapters at all. So that's what that is. This is a uh, Hellcat pump that has a sock apparently that'll work for GM applications. We're gonna test that theory, of course. This is from Quantum Fuel Systems. Um, these guys are super nice. Uh, I don't know if anyone's dealt with them. I'm sure you guys have. Um, these guys are legit, uh, very knowledgeable, very helpful. I highly recommend buying things from them. They do have some pretty impressive pricing structure uh, and they offer quite a bit of information regarding different applications and whatnot. They do sell fuel injectors as well, but I found that the uh, Vren gave me a little bit better deal on them, to be honest. And that's why I got the ones from him. So, yes, we are going to run flex capabilities. So I went ahead and went with PTFE hose. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt to deal with uh, connecting the hose ends, but just for a little bit of effort, I think it makes a little bit better installation. This kit is actually from Evil Energy. It comes with... I don't know, maybe 20 feet of hose, which is great. Should be enough. If not, get some more. And it comes with a multitude of fittings, uh, some 45s, 
Um, maybe some 90s. I'm not sure exactly what comes in it. Hopefully, with everything that's in there, I think there's a few more fittings in there that I've purchased because I kind of have a plan with this fuel tank. We'll see if it works out or not. And the fuel filter I plan on going with is just a Wix, you know, very basic, um, you know, frame rail style mounted housing. Um, it uses, you know, you can use a multitude of fittings. I believe this is like a 118 or 114 thread pitch, something like that. Pretty standard. Uh, a lot of guys have used these and had great success with them. So that's what we're going to go with as far as a fuel filter setup is concerned. And uh, the reason why this is a little more complicated than others because this vehicle has a returnless fuel system on it. And I want to go, obviously, the return style. And apparently the, uh, the bucket is different in this vehicle versus the earlier 99 to 02 setups. So anyway, that's where we are so far with the fuel system upgrades. And uh, hopefully all this stuff here will uh, work out. We wanted to go with somewhat some semi-budget, I would say, but uh, vetted semi-budget components. And all these parts here have had pretty good success uh, with the sloppy style builds and uh, the, let's say low budget LS builds. So, all right, so on to the next. From forced performance that we are gonna use on this project, uh, we ended up getting the 7875 with a .96 exhaust housing however i really like the one that he has the uh, cast wastegate port on it i think it's clever i think it adds a little bit of uh, compactness and simplicity to the system we're going to see if it clears the inner fender well and all that hopefully it does if not of course we can notch it uh, i ended up getting the turbo and the wastegate and the exhaust half for i think it's three and a half inch uh, for the downpipe and I ended up getting the uh, cast um, overseas exhaust uh, turbo manifold this piece um, you know it's it's robust certainly robust it does have a little bit of flash on it uh, that you know maybe I'll clean that up a bit uh, I've heard maybe some uh, issues with spark plug fitment we're gonna test that uh, to see if all that clears but otherwise, it's, you know, it is what it is. It's not bad uh, for the price. It certainly fits the budget. And I think because it's robust and it's certainly heavy, I think it'll have some longevity to it. I think what I'm going to do is take a, um, a burr, maybe smooth these out a little bit. Uh, they are fairly rough inside, but it's not terrible. I mean, there's a little bit of, you know, misalignment in the casting, which, again, that's, I don't think it's the end of the world. Uh, we'll just tighten that up and uh, hopefully it'll you know flow pretty well well enough for the power goals we have uh, the power goals that's a good point um 78 75 i i'm sure this turbo is probably good for way more power than uh, i plan on running uh, i'm going to be maybe to the five 600 horsepower wheel range which i think this will easily do that i'm hoping this uh, 38 millimeter tile uh, wastegate should easily control boost at, at that low of level i'm thinking maybe i don't know 10 or 12 psi somewhere like that should get me maybe 14 i'm not really sure exactly the, the overall goal for the horsepower rating isn't as critical as just having something that stays together and uh you know for good for um, ice cream and burnouts so anyway if you guys have an opportunity to talk to anybody from force performance i highly recommend it these guys are just legit i mean if you watch the uh sloppy radio show with robert young the guy's a freaking genius, in my opinion. Uh, Well-spoken, um, just a super sharp dude. And um, his employees are just some of the nicest uh, to deal with, to be honest. Um, and, of course, you know, they support the sloppy world to some degree. And, um, I don't know, I just highly recommend thinking about a turbo system from them. This is the uh, cast manifold from Force Performance, which I'm sure is the same as a lot of other manifolds on the market. Um, it looks pretty good. The only issue I see initially is uh, the spark plug hole for that one, pretty straightforward. This guy is uh, pretty shrouded. Uh, I drew a line on there. Of course, I'm not going to take that much off, but just give me some indication of where I need to uh, run the burr. And I think I'm going to do this guy a little bit as well, just, just a touch. And then uh, the plug for the uh, coolant sensor on this side. I'm going to uh, just notch the corner, I mean probably a little better than that line, I just marked it where it needs to be notched. So then I'm going to knock some of the burr off of it 
and then I'm going to uh, clean up the inside a little bit. All right, so the intercool that we're gonna use is a three inch thick, three inch inlet outlet, uh, EM USA. I don't know if I got it from eBay or it might've been Amazon, I'm not sure, but pretty standard issue, you know, low cost intercooler. Uh, Matt Happel and Calvin Nelson always talk about the weight of the intercooler uh, being indicative of the quality of it. This one's pretty light, gotta be honest. It's not that heavy, so hopefully uh, <laughs> I'm not making a, a blundering error by using this one, but eh, we'll see. Um, the good thing is the dimensions are pretty similar to all the other ones that are higher quality, I guess. So if we do have uh, you know IETs that are out of control or a uh, significant boost drop or what have you, you know we'll uh, we'll address that down the road. Uh, this is another point of contention that I did maybe go a little cheaper. This is just a basic three inch intercooler piping kit. Um, once again, eBay or Amazon, I'm not exactly sure where I got it from, but it, you know, it should have enough of the angles of what I have to do. Uh, if not, I've got a few other, um, additional ones that I've used from past projects. So I'm sure we can snake something together, but, uh, that should keep our boost temperatures at a somewhat of a medium temp. I'm not sure. We'll see. Uh, I have faith that it'll work and, uh, that's what I'm going with. Okay. So what we decided to do instead of using the 4.8 liter that's in uh, my son's truck, uh, we are gonna stick this in it. This is uh, a stock bottom in 5.3 with a Brian Tooley, I believe it's a stage two truck cam in it. Uh, yes, I know, it does have head studs on it. But the good thing is they're Chineseums, so yeah, there's that. Um, it does have like the standard Beehive Springs, um, it does have, uh, I believe, hardened push rods as well. Uh, this was kind of an engine that we threw together, uh, stuff we had laying around the shop. It does have a Moroso like, muscle car oil pan on it, which I won't use. I'll just use a stock truck pan. And, um, yeah, it's basically just bone stock. It did do the ring gap kind of aggressive. Uh, <laughs> I think it's like 30,000, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, you know, I figured, what the hell, right? Uh, shouldn't hurt it. Uh, what, what's the old saying? Uh, if the ring gap is too tight, uh, everybody knows, but if it's too loose, only you know. Uh, I'm just kind of adhering to those standards. This engine originally was going to go in that project car, but you know, that was one of those eight month long project cars that I started five years ago. So obviously, I'm not adhering to the one hour a day Matt Happel technique. So we'll get back to that when we get back to that. But anyway, this motor I think will work really well in this truck. So, and they also, the other major benefit of doing this is when we, uh, when we try to kick the connecting rods out of it, we'll just put the stock 4.8 in it. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> 